I got some cakes for us to prepare us for this episode. I got a delightful strawberry cake. Whoa. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Wow. Mmm. Today, we're doing pie. Today on Worth It, we're gonna try three pies at three drastically different price points to find out which one is the most worth it at its price. Which one do you like better, pie or cake, and why? Create your three paragraph essay. You can submit it to my Dropbox. Okay, here's why I like pie better. I like pie better because it is usually less sweet, and I like pie better because <laughs> There is more contrast and texture available. Period, end of paragraph. My turn. Food is about sharing experiences, and what food is better at sharing experiences than cake? I'm just saying more of the time, I'm more down to have five. I want to end a debate without having to get all of an arm. Okay, all I want to do is share some pie today. Wanna shake on it? My name is Michael Osborne. I'm the owner here at Pie and Burger. We are going to be trying several of our classic fruit pies today, and we'll feature apple and boysenberry. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of Pie and Burger? Pie and Burger started in the fall of 1963. The recipes are the same recipes that started, and they actually predated the restaurant. I've been here 45 years, and we do things exactly the same way that we did when wow. we opened, with a lot of the same ingredients. So when you joined, what was your role with the restaurant? I was 18 years old, and I was a night cook, so... Uh, really? Yeah, so... Yeah. I was in college at University of Southern California. I started working here with the idea that I would be here a couple years to make a little money, and then I was going to go on and be a dentist. Wow. So, <laughs> now you're sending people to the dentist. Yeah, it, yes, exactly. How are the pies made? First of all, it's all about ingredients. We only use gold medal flour, we only use CNH sugar, and we never use lard. We use a really high grade vegetable shortening. So we knead the dough by hand. When we make the dough, we like to let the dough sit for several days and sort of seize up. All of our pies is almost a full concentration of fruit. There's no fruit flavors really added to them. No machine, you know, all hand done. You only have that one mixer in the back? We only use it to make a few light toppings, whipped cream and things like that. We don't use any of it in our regular pie making process Every, whatsoever. Everything else about the pie is handmade? Everything is handmade. We measure out each pie. We'll put in the exact amount of fruit every time and then we'll layer a top crust on it. The oven that we use here at Pie and Burger, we use a, a pizza deck oven. We cook right on the deck surface and we cook at a little bit slower temperature. It allows the pie to come in contact directly with the cooking surface of the oven and it cooks the bottom of the shell so you don't get that doughy texture. You actually notice a little bit of brown on the bottom of the pie shell itself. Are you ever asked about your preference of pie versus cake? Depends on the day, I guess, a little bit. I have a preference to pie overall. Wow. So we're gonna do the pie, good. we'll do the burger, that's it. Pie and burger, end of story. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Apple pie at pie and burger. And if we're going pie, we're going shake. That actually looks really good. You want I'm just, some? I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm gonna take a oh. little sample. Oh. I'm ready to get into this pie. Okay. Ooh, look at that. A clean cut by yours truly. Mm. And look how it holds up. Mm. It's not falling apart. I gotta really do some gymnastics with this thing. Do some gymnastics. Oh. <laughs> mm. oh, that tastes real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How apples actually taste. The thing that makes pie pie is the end. Is the yes. delicious crust. Yep. A lot of the times when there's too much crust, it's just dried out. This is still a delicious, tender, baked treat just at the end. I mean, is there anything more wholesome than apple pie? Maybe like going to your grandma's house. What if she had an apple pie when you oh, got there? Oh my God. <laughs> That's a movie right there. And the sequel is boysenberry pie. We heat some boysenberries on the stove to melt them down a little bit. To get consistency, we use individually quick frozen fruit. That way we're able to get boysenberries in the winter time when it's not necessarily a growing season. Right now we're getting boysenberries from Chile. Visually, you have to love a pie with a red filling. This could be a lighthouse. Cheers. Mm. Oh. Mmm, give me another bite. Wow, just the right amount of crust. Pie taco? Pie taco? Go ahead, pie taco it. Oh yeah. I can't understate how perfect the amount of crust is on this pie. Oh, okay. 
All right, we did not do this the wrong way. Yep. Pie and burger. Thank you. I am literally in heaven. Oh my god. All right, let's finish up these burgers, and we're heading to the road. We're going to Houston. You see that bite? So Andrew. Yeah. Pie fact. Here's a pie fact for you. We're in Houston. There's a little dessert. We got some sesame balls. Whoa. Whoa. Mm. 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 Adam's having a good time on the swing set. Pie fact. Historians believe that early pie doughs, which mostly consisted of water and flour, and could be quite thick, were primarily meant to protect the food inside and weren't always eaten. So pies used to just be semi-edible boxes for other foods. That's right. I'm glad they figured out how to eat it, eat the crust. Next up, we're headed to a restaurant called Underbelly. Underbelly. Under my belly. We're just gonna have some pie. But not just some pie, because it is going to cake, be- Cake pie! It's a cake pie. It's a pie with cake in it. That's right, we stuck some cake in this episode. Cake or pie? Pie. Okay, you're off the show. My name's Chris Shepard, chef owner here in Underbelly in Houston. And today we're doing the carrot cake fried pie. Is that a cake or a pie? Technically both, but it's a pie. Fried pie is just a southern staple around here. Can you tell us about what pie is in Houston? Proverbial question is cake or pie, right? But yes. here, we're pie. So Underbelly is focused on the story of Houston food. It's also the most culturally diverse city. Basically the gateway drug to people <laughs> coming into Houston. You know, they'll come in and taste something and be like, I really like this flavor. And it's like, well, this is Korean. You need to go up on Long Point. Now, at this point, let's let Victoria kind of show you and walk you through the fried pie aspect of things. I'm Victoria Dearman. I am the pastry director. I've worked here since Underbelly opened almost six years now. Underbelly's entire premise is about locality. So right now it is carrot season. We've got the carrots. We shred them all and make a very traditional carrot Cake. Then we make the high crust, unrendered pork fat. Yeah. It's basically the fat around the kidneys. It's much firmer than the outside fat, okay. so it's kind of like protected by meat. That's the main part of the dough, is the flour, the unrendered pork fat, some salt, baking powder, and cold water. Just get everything in the mixer. I try to let it sit overnight, or at least for a couple hours before I use it. We'll roll them into small balls and roll those out. So we have our circles, and then we put our cake and cream cheese icing, fold it up, pinch it around the sides like a little empanada, and then we fry it. You always want them to come out GBD, golden brown delicious. After the pie comes out of the fryer, sprinkle cinnamon and sugar on top, and goes on a plate with candied pecans and kumquat sour cream ice cream. So we asked the chef for their recommended drink pairing. Victoria gave us this lovely Topo Chico, but then Chef Chris is going with the whiskey. I love it. I love it too. Cheers. I don't know how we should do this. It's a hand pie, but I'm not gonna hold hands with you. So I'm just gonna take off kind of like the center chunk. Ooh. Seeing the inside of this makes me go. Here you have top crust on both sides. That's like a win-win. Ready to pie? Yeah. That's ridiculously good. Kind of like a Frankenstein dessert experiment, but it's not a monster after all. I don't think there's ever been a real answer to the pie versus cake debate. The answer is cake pie. Oh. Oh, there you go. Mm, throw in the ice cream with the pie, and you get like that citrusy flavor. Having that zing of that orangey kumquat, it's delightful. What's this? Is you need more pie. What? Oh. This is vinegar pie. Oh, yeah. This is a chocolate citrus pie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is the best part of any ice cream accompanied dessert. My dad will spend 25 minutes going like this with a bowl of ice cream. Ice cream is like the most delicious creamsicle I've ever had. Pie break. Chris Shepard actually advised that we, while we're here in Houston, try some Viet Cajun food because it's the thing to do in Houston. So here's a fact for you. According to the American Pie Council, over 180 million pies are bought at U.S. grocery stores every year. That's enough pies to circle the globe with leftovers. So now we're going to a place that 
serves pumpa capo pie cake. That's right. We had cake pie, and now we're going pie cake. Pumpa capo pie cake. Pumpa capo. Boom! Let's go eat some pie cake. It is 8 p.m. right now, and I am up. Let's get that pie. <laughs> Welcome to Three Brothers Bakery. My name is Robert Jucker. Today we're going to be trying the Pumpa Capel pie cake. We got voted by Country Living Magazine for our pecan pie as the best pecan pie mail order has to offer. One of the writers for the Houston Chronicle, Greg Morago, wanted to write an article about that. I started talking to my wife about having me do something unusual. I made this Pumpa Capel pie cake. We really did it as a joke. The Food Network found out about it, and then it just really went viral. Is it a pie or is it a cake? Well, that's really the question. <laughs> <laughs> is this just the liger of pie cake? It's more like the turducken of desserts. That's exactly what it is. What are the flavors inside of this thing? Apple pie with an apple spice cake, pecan pie with a chocolate cake, and pumpkin pie with a pumpkin spice cake. So there are also three different kinds of cake. Yes. I see. Whoa. First, you got to start with making the pie. So we make the dough for the pie shells, filling in, put the lattice work on, bake them off. Then after we get the pies ready and we cool them off, we get the batter ready for the cake batter, and then we pour them in the pans, dump the pies into the pans, cover them up with batter, bake them off. We let those cool when they come out of the oven, and then we start to build it. Apple on the bottom, pecan in the middle, pumpkin on top, put the cream cheese icing in between, nuts around the side, and then we drizzle caramel on top. Generally speaking, across all desserts, are you more of a pie guy or a cake guy? I think I'm more of a cake guy. Yes. Really? Yeah. Wow. So you have to understand that I work here every day, right? <laughs> and I'm trying to lose some weight. I just like them without icing. Yeah. Just, just the cake. We're going to have three, three pies. pies in three cakes. In one cake. Pumpkin. Pecan, apple. Pumpa capple. Oh, pumpa cap. Pump pecan bowl. Adam was telling me before this, there's a rule to not eat something that's bigger than the size of your head. <laughs> Too late. We're breaking the rule today. Cause that thing is bigger <laughs> than my head. You got that? I'll this take is what the they other. Use, this is what they actually use to cut the pie cake. First a bit of pumpkin, then a little bit of apple. Pumpkin We've got a apple. Pumpkin that. Pump. Pump capple. Cheers, Steven. It's really good. When you eat a smoothie, you're, you're putting together like bananas and apples and other flavors together. This is just like the non-blended version of a smoothie. It's funny though, because yeah. it started as a, as a joke. That's when true creativity comes out. I knew going in that we were having three pies, three cakes, but I forgot about the icing component. Yes. So not only is this the greatest hits of pie flavors, but the greatest frosting, yes. arguably, is the cream cheese frosting. I want to try the pecan pie by itself. Wonderful. Yes, wow. you're never bored eating this pie cake. There's always another flavor to come mm, back to. Mm -hmm. But just like 3.14, there is no round conclusion <laughs> to this pie cake. That's how pie works, right? It's been a while. Adam, would you like to try the pumpka apple? Pump pumpa capple. Pumpa capple. <laughs> what are you doing? I gotta admit, you may have won me over with this episode. Pie takes the cake for me. Nah, I don't just... But yeah, pie. Which pie was the most worth it to you and its price? For me, the most worth it pie was Pine Burgers Slice of Pie. Mm. It's the last chapter on a delicious book called I Just Ate a Burger. My worth a winner, Underbelly. You got both cake and pie in a pie. Hot crispy, delicious filling. And if you went back there, regardless of the filling, that's gonna be a great pie. But shout out to the Pumpa Capel pie. Bobby, you figured it out. You did. It's like landing on the moon. Special worth it props to the Pumpa Capel pie. Oh. Adam, who's your worth it winner? Ooh. We're at the hotel. Yes. It is time to sleep. Next week coming up. We're oh. vampires. No, we're eating pho. Actually, we're doing it right now, but you'll see that next week. Teaser alert. Oh, you guys have been asking for it. They've been asking pho it. We're gonna take a nap, get rid of the bad puns. You'll see us next week. <laughs> oh, yes!